I'm so happy here dancing with you. Let's dance together and see what we can do to make a new world, to make a new world, to make a new world, to make a new world. Dance, dance, dance upon the earth. Dance upon the earth. So this is uh, Bill Kefke, and he's uh, the author of Garden Planet and also The Final Empire. And uh, he's taken a look at the world and really changed my point of view on how the world works. And he also was the first one to introduce me to the Russian series Anastasia. And so we've been, we've been, Bill's been on the same wavelength for most of his life. And I'm a, I'm a real late comer having come from the uh, Borg machinery myself and having worked in, in factory automation and uh, the financial system. So I understand how all that stuff works, but I also understand that it's it's completely all these things are completely under unsustainable and have actually contributed to the downfall of our civilization. So here we are and we are we are now seeing that we are in this long emergency. And uh, so the thing is, is that we can sit here frozen like deer in headlights and just wait until we can't go to Safeway anymore. <laughs> Or we can do something. So what do we do, Bill? What do we do? Well, uh, uh, go down and get some garden seeds. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, well, this is uh, this is really serious business. Uh, now I'm an old cowboy from uh, sawmill worker from Eastern Oregon, so. Uh, uh, it's got to be real simple for me to understand. And uh, here's what I understand, Will, that we have a, a culture, a human culture, that uh, began about 8,000 years ago that is committed to infinite growth. Yes. You've probably uh, been on the mass media uh, everybody wants progress. Everybody wants growth. Uh, this has been going on for 8,000 years. Yes. This, uh, uh, infinite growth in a finite context. Can you believe that, Will? Oh, Seven billion people <laughs> have that as a subconscious belief system. Something has to change. <laughs> Uh, that 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 is the end of everything, right? Now, <coughs> we are members of an industrial civilization. We deal with machines. We create machines, and then we become conditioned by machines and begin to act in a machine-like manner. But this has not always been the case. Yes. The transition from uh, hunter-gatherers to uh, 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 agriculture was was the key change. Uh, when when this occurred, Will, we uh, as a species went through a, a, a major change in, in terms of our 200,000 year history as a species. We were thoroughly involved and, and embedded in the natural life. Living things were our reality. Uh, we, we had encyclopedic knowledge of the natural world, all the living things. We knew all the animals. We knew all the plants. We knew their uses, their medicine, all of that, all of that kind of knowledge that we had. Now, when, when the, the change occurred, this was a spiritual change from a, a consciousness of being part of all life on the earth to being simply a farmer or a herdsman. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this began a new kind of culture where where uh, uh, 
most of us don't understand the natural history of the world because we live in a mechanical culture and we're not cognizant of living things or the living world. And uh, what what the key to this is, will is that uh, surpluses are gained from the earth. We've heard this a lot. Now, the surpluses are gained from running a net deficit of the fertility of the earth. Yes. The exhaustion of topsoil, deforestation, the overgrazing, etc. Now, China, one, one half of China was a great temperate zone forest at one time before civilization started, before agriculture started. The Indus Valley in Pakistan was a thriving human culture until they, until they ruined the ecology in the Indus River. And in Iraq, Mesopotamia, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, one third of the arable land of Iraq right now cannot be used because it's still so Solomon from uh, Babylonian irrigation. Wow. The, the, the mouth of the Tigris Euphrates River has extended itself 185 miles into the Gulf, all filled in with erosion material from that destroyed watershed, overgrazing agriculture, deforestation, that, that, uh, that delta area where all that erosion material ended up is where the marsh Arabs live right now. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an example of, 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 of an ecological destruction. The life of the earth did not come back. The human culture simply uh, uh, continued to eat and eat on it with their goats and their sheep. Any little sprouts that come up out of the ground are immediately eaten. By the <laughs> and this has been 3,000 years, right? Right. <laughs> and it never has come back. It, wow. If you're familiar with the uh, book of Gilgamesh, yes. you, you, you find out that at that time, there was a cedar forest stretching from Lebanon to the Euphrates River. Yes. It's all gone now. It's all uh, the last gasp of that land is rag pavement, it's called. It's like almost uh, uh, cement. Mm. And, uh, no, no vegetation, just dirt, uh, solid dirt. Now, uh, the, the, the onward rush of civilization of the emperors, the empire, the patriarchs, went uh, from the Middle East, then it went into North Africa. Uh, North Africa was a thriving semi-arid eco uh, desert ecology. The, the uh, empires of Rome, empires of Greece, use that as their bread basket and right. shipped out uh, 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 meat and wheat and uh, various items from those ports. Those port cities now where they were are now 10 and 15 miles from the ocean, all filled in with erosion material and leaving northern Africa uh, 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 ecologically dead. Right. Uh, uh, and then they moved into Europe and destroyed those great forests of Europe. Now, this is the natural history of the living earth. And this is the result of this kind of society that we live in. And, and uh, right now, of course, we're looking at the end. Uh, oceans acidifying, uh, uh, coral reefs dying, Big fish in the ocean gone, soil exhaustion, deforestation, uh, global warming, all that sort of situation. We're, we're approaching the climax, ecological climax of the planet in terms yes. of, of humans, uh, 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 the human sustenance from the planet 
and all this is based upon surpluses, the, the, the running a net deficit of the fertility of the earth. This is what has allowed these massive societies to exist. Right. Because they, they, we, we have been able to pull out fertility out of the earth to finance these massive pyramidal societies. It hasn't, the thing is, it hasn't changed. Nothing is, we, we still have, I mean, to me, I look at the formula that I used uh, when I was in the financial markets and the formula for compound interest has that little exponential term, the, the future value equals the present value times one plus I to the nth power. So it, in, in essence, what I see, Bill, now is, do you remember the story of the, uh, I think it's a Persian story about the king who wants to reward his uh, somebody for a minister for something he did. And he said, what would you like? And the minister said, I'd like you to take a chessboard and put one grain of wheat on the first square and two grains of wheat on the second square and four grains of wheat on the third square and eight grains of wheat and so on. And the king said, is that all you want? And said, okay, give it to him. And then he killed him when he found out. And they said, that's you can't give that's too much wheat that and in fact that's more wheat than has ever been grown in the history of the world and so what i'm saying is that our financial system essentially we're playing on that chessboard we're we're on some square on the point of no return because you can never satisfy an exponential equation when it when it, it's open-ended like that and we've proven it mathematically if yeah. you watch have you seen a, it's a beautiful mind the movie it's a beautiful mind it's about this fellow named it's a it's a fellow a mathematician named nash and uh, and he showed it's a really cool scene it's a he showed that in a in a bar when he was in college how they they proved he it gave him the insight to show that everything that our economic system is based on is going to fail and I mean, it's a really, it, and I've talked to a lot of people and they don't get it, even though it was shown in a really simple way in that movie, a lot of people, we just don't get this idea that if we have an exponential increase, it's a very dangerous thing that we have a hard time understanding. So David Suzuki has a, David Suzuki has a, a video too. And, and, you know, he talks about food supply, how the food supply has to, has to keep uh, going up. I think it's a Malthusian type of uh, thing, but he's saying, you know, it's it, that, that argument never went away. The Malthus thing is people think that it's been disproven, but it hasn't been disproven. We just made agriculture. We just figured out new ways to torture the earth. <laughs> so, I mean, that's all. Yeah. Well, people will deny this. This most of this belief system is contained in the subconscious mind. And, and as we grow from in, infancy to old age, we're constantly, uh, uh, re, this belief system is reinforced. In right. That we can keep going ahead. We can have more progress and more progress because it's always happening. Even though, because we live in a mechanical Society, we don't see the decline of the living world, and this is this is what we need to do to regain the balance on this planet. Is uh, we uh, uh, the planet ten thousand years ago was in climax condition. Now, when you have a, a, a injury, say on your arm. Uh, there's a scab developed, and slowly the, the skin rebuilds itself, the scab falls off, and, 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 and it, reach, it comes back to climax condition. The earth heals itself in the same manner. Uh, uh, fire, blood, lightning, whatever comes through, makes an injury in the living system. Then there is a succession of plant gills that come through, starting with the uh, pioneer plants, they're called, and they right. come in and, and begin to rebuild the topsoil, and then other successions, bushes, 
small trees, et cetera, uh, come in until it rebuilds to the climax condition. And then there is stability at the climax condition. Now, the entire planet 10,000 years ago was in a climax condition. It's in equilibrium. Yeah, uh, ecological balance. Right. And so you look around uh, right now and you see that there's very few areas on the Earth that, that are still in climax condition. <laughs> no Being kidding. On some small portions of the Congo, uh, maybe in the, the Himalayas. Uh, and, but this, this is the injury to the Earth. Uh, uh, much of this ecological destruction in the third world is we're not informed about how serious this is. Yes. It, uh, uh, as the, uh, you know, in, in, a, in about 300 years, Europe had a population explosion. 500 million people were exported from Europe to colonize the earth. And, and establish this mode of, of, of uh, society in uh, uh, exploiting modes of society. Wetiko. In, yeah, in Potosi, uh, in Bolivia, one million Indians were worked to death mining silver for the Spanish people. Uh, it's been horribly uh, uh, cruel society that has developed at, uh, first they uh, uh, the humans exploit the earth and 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 have no regard for living things have no consciousness of living things and then finally they begin to treat other people that way and this has been the history of imperial culture that yes. began with the emperors in Babylon the bankers by the way began in Babylon also. Right. So, so what do we do besides grab so some here, seeds? What else? Here's what we do. We, 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 uh, you know, I, I want to speak in idealized terms. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, we have to change our state of consciousness yes. to understand and make the realization that we are we are living things, and we are part of the cellular mass around us of living things. We're all part of the earth, and this is what uh, uh, the, the basic uh, perspective of our ancient human family, our 200,000 years of history, until agriculture began eight, eight or, eight or 10,000 years ago. And yes. so uh, we, 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 we have to create a society in which the restoration of the life of the earth becomes the central morality of the, of the human culture. The, the earth, the living earth is our home. It has been injured terribly and needs to be rebuilt and, and revivified. And we can do that. Now, uh, over the last 50 years, we've developed techniques uh, since the 60s, uh, I would say, of, of, of uh, gaining food and gaining habitation by our own effort. And in terms of shelter, we have uh, straw bale, we have cob, we have adobe. Uh, we, we are able to make our, our shelter from local material, which is 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 a basic uh, uh, factor. With yes. with permaculture, we're able to grow our own food and become self-sufficient. Now, permaculture is a method of growing food that is 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 an attempt to replicate the natural ecology, based basically on perennial plants that are offered a stable ecosystem. And this is our, our effort is to, to regain ecological stability, ecological balance and harmony. 
And so with permaculture, we can, we can create a, a food sustenance system in, which is permanent and, and permaculture because it, it does not, uh, uh, it, it is not primarily based upon annual plants, feeds the soil. Yes. The leaves and organic debris drop off of the perennial plant. This helps feed the soil. And it should so, just take uh, care of itself, right? Yeah. It's, our, our, our other efforts at, at waterworks of, of uh, swale, uh, check dams, et cetera, we, we, we uh, uh, rebuild the hydrology under the ground, rebuild the, the, the aquifers. And so uh, we establish villages in which uh, uh, permaculture is practiced and where our effort is to rebuild the ecology around us through permaculture and then in, in the outer areas uh, uh, away from the permaculture we, we uh, encourage the, the restoration of the natural ecology yes and in this way we have a village and and it is existing in ecological stability which means it can endure in perpetuity and unlike the surrounding culture and the surrounding ecology which is going down we we are increasing the life of the earth and living from the increase rather than the opposite of, of exploiting and eating up the ecology and, and and living from the loss of the ecology. So now we have these villages, we have to recreate a human culture in terms of, 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 of uh, based on love, uh, the caring of the earth, based on life. Our, our morality is the defense of life not death yes and we live in a death culture which lives off of the death of the earth yes of the death of living things and what our, our our effort in the future will be to recreate life and aid the growth of life through uh reforestation through all of these uh regenerative techniques uh, Right south of you, Will, it is uh, a Skeeter who, who is sponsoring the Earth Regeneration Project. Hmm. There's, there, there is a worldwide movement now to, to regenerate the ecology of the Earth. People are doing this. Uh, there, there is a, a Chinese-American fellow from San Francisco named John Liu. L I U, John Liu, and he has done uh, uh, amazing work of video with video graphing uh, areas around the earth where whole cultures are restoring the the ecology of the planet. On in the Loess Plateau in northeast China, an amazing uh, uh, thing is happening. Millions of Chinese people with shovels are restoring the earth. Uh, and there's a practical problem. They've got three gorgeous dams downstream from this ecologically destroyed area. It was destroyed by the original Han culture many thousands of years ago. Uh -huh. They ate it up as they built their empire. And, and, it, and it became just uh, 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 dirt, uh, uh, deforested dirt, and and so all of this dirt is washing into the Yellow River. The soil oh, yeah. there is yellow. So and that's why it's the called the <laughs> Yellow River. And so they've got this huge dam there, and it's going to silt up in a very short order unless they do something, and they are doing something. But uh, John. Liu uh, shows other areas in Ethiopia, various Africa, various places where the cultures are actually re 
restoring the ecology on the broad scale. And this is the kind of, of, of situation we have to look at in the future. We, there's, when there's no topsoil, no forest, no prairie left, we have to figure out how are we gonna exist on this planet? Well, I think a lot of- How we can do it. A lot of people are feeling some kind of an internal call to do this, right? It's not something that is being published in the mainstream media, people saying, hey, look, we've got to start doing this. It's almost like people are, at least this is what I see, I, people are waking up and saying, I've got to be involved in this. I've got to find a place where I fit in. And, and it's, it's a little bit daunting sometimes because, I mean, I know from, from my point of view as a guy who's now 65 years old, my physical abilities have been greatly limited. So back 10 years ago, a dozen years ago, I was trying to build an eco village in Nicaragua. That was my dream. And I just thought this is the perfect place because we can pretty much build whatever we want to and nobody's going to bother us. And it's relatively inexpensive to live here. And we were next door to a Swiss uh, installation to study organic farming and sustainable agriculture and organic pesticides, all this really cool stuff was going on. But as you probably know, the political situation in, in uh, Nicaragua is not conducive to such things now. So, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, how can I do something in my state living in Victoria, BC? So what I've, what I've, there are two things that I'd like to bring up here. I think one of the biggest things that we really haven't dealt with, but what places like Tamara are trying to deal with is this, is this change of consciousness that we all have to get through in order to see ourselves as different. And, and you, know, you mentioned that we have to see ourselves as part of a whole, but what I see in what was in myself and is in a lot of other of my friends is that we just think that we can go back and live in the forest, but that doesn't work. I mean, we have a lot of self work to do. And one of the things that I find that I have to do is I have this idea that I was a good person. In other words, I functioned in society according to the rules and I had a wife and three kids and a shiny forehead and I went to church and you know, all that stuff because I bought the lie that this worked. And so I just thought, if I act in the right way, how I'm supposed to act as an American, whatever you want to call me, then everything's going to be okay. I mean, I can remember my dad telling me, you know, when I was saying, you know, dad, look at the system. I mean, I've just spent a year learning how the financial system works. He taught me for God's sake. He, he was my teacher. I'm sitting there in class learning. He said, if, if everybody knew how the system worked, they wouldn't use it. And his answer was something really? like, you know, Willie, intelligent people run the system and we're all in this together and we'll figure it out. If there are problems today, people are going to be working on it. But that's not what I see now. What I see now is more what um, I think it was Naomi Klein said. Yes, there is a solution, but not within the system. And so we, we have to help each other get outside of the of the system and so one of the things that they're doing in Tamara is that they have this thing called SD forum it's a Selbstdarstellung forum so you get up in front of your peers and you tell what's on your mind you express yourself whatever that might be and I like that but that's really I mean it's very formal it's very German and I'm not sure that everybody can do that kind of thing there's another model that I saw in an African video where if somebody does something that's antisocial, they just get them in, a, in, the, in the middle of a circle and then the whole uh, community gets around and tells them what a good person he is and what all the good stuff he's done in his life. And you know, I, I can see that that's not what we do. We, we get people in a circle and start chucking rocks at them. Well, <laughs> Bill, uh, you know the rainbow family of living life. Uh, I don't know that. This is called a heart, a heart song in, in, in the, at the Rainbow Gathering, singing the heart song. Oh, cool. And, and, and uh, it's a 
common thing. Um, and so uh, the Rainbow family, of course, is uh, an attempt by old-time hippies to recreate a, an aboriginal tribe. That sounds very interesting. For about 30 years. And, and uh, people are amazed, outer pe out, outside people are amazed that we can take five, five to 10,000 people into a wilderness area, feed them every day, keep them safe, and no conflict and, and, and no problems. And, and when the Rainbow family leaves that area, it's all reseeded. Everything wow. is, is returned back to the natural condition. And uh, the, the rainbow gatherings have been going on for like, some 30 years now. Wow, I didn't know about that. I've got to study that a little bit. Well, the other, just one other thing I wanted to mention is I was reading one of the books, I, one of the uh, excerpts I read out loud was Anastasia, and she was saying, you know, the forest doesn't want everybody to move back into the forest. People aren't ready for that. So one of the things that I was thinking is we have groups here that are rewilding Victoria. So we have a group that is, re is bringing, they've brought up one creek, a river, and there's another group bringing up another one. You know, they've been covered over, but they're not, they're, they're rivers, they're real rivers. And, and people get this, I can just see it in their eyes. It's like, what? We've covered up a river. I've got to get that thing uncovered. We've got to be able to see that. It becomes kind of an obsession, and uh, and it's almost like I mean, there's a there's a movie on it called Lost Rivers, and some of the people are like they're looking to the side. Is anybody watching us when we uncover? They know they're doing something that's sort of uh, dangerous, and I think that that's a, that's something that we can all do is is make our is we know that we are in occupied forest we can think of where wherever we live we live in occupied forest we have occupied this landscape and so what can we do just to bring that back and it may be something as simple as picking up garbage even picking up a piece of garbage gets us a little bit closer to some pristine state and it may be planting a garden or planting a tree whatever but i think we can each of us even if we're you know walking around with a walker we could plant a tree somewhere yeah. you know there's, there's the fundamental problem is the belief system yeah that we can have infinite growth and finite content right and we can get this across to the world people that this ain't going to work uh, that you know that that's one of the first items. You cannot have an infinite growth in a finite system, which is which is the basic belief system of the seven billion civilized people on the planet. But now, uh, Will, uh, uh, in the in the sixties when we ate a lot of mushrooms, we thought, well, let's go back to the land. We can live as forager hunters. We'll learn the the edible plants and, and all of that kind of business. But we we never realized that civilization has already wiped out the herds of animals. Yes. Has already uh, wiped out a lot of the ecology and invasive species that come in, and et cetera. There ain't no way we can go back to the hills. I understand. Your hunters. We have to rebuild the living earth. First. Yeah, and then, and then we can try uh, doing that, but that's many hundreds of years in the future, certainly. Uh, uh, you remember the book Dune? Uh, it was a Frank Herbert. Book. Yes. Uh, yeah, Frank Herbert, and and in that in that story, there were the sand people that lived out way out in these sand dunes. Right. And. Well, their basic morality was that to restore the water, the hydrology of the earth. And they, they had little devices that they saved the condensation from their breathing. Uh, wow. They had underground pools where they were accumulating the water. And the entire culture that they had was devoted toward restoring the hydrology of the earth which would then be the basis 
of the living earth. And this is the kind of commitment that, that we, we must have in order to carry a human culture into the future, I believe. Yeah. If we can't restore the living earth, then, then there's no hope for it. Uh, you know, just like Gilgamesh and the cedar forest, it's all gone. And it's not going to return unless we replant a forest. Yes. Well, I think you've you've reiterated the the basic things that were, you know, when you're in your own book, uh, the uh, Final Empire, and you've reiterated this because you go through some of the solutions there as well as in Garden Planet. But also, I mean, this is what Anastasia is about, and this is what Tamara is about. It's you're saying the same things. We have to have we have to re we have to be, have the intention of healing the planet and that included in that is water is taking care of water and making that available again and then the other thing is just community people have to have instead of focusing on how can i get more stuff we're focused on creating a healing biotope we're focused on healing the planet so we can all live here so the question in my mind that the whole thing it brings it up are we going to make it are we going to are we going to succeed in changing our consciousness or as my or is it w-a-g-d as one of my friends says we're all going to die <laughs> so if, if if we live in an ecologically sustainable community and these communities are dotted all over the earth as as they are with the uh, e eco village movement there are eco villages all over the planet now, and right. uh, it, as the outer society dies away, which it will uh, from ecological destruction, then hopefully some of these small communities and cultures will endure, because they're they are living in ecological balance sustainability. Those then will be the human culture that will project into the future. Okay. Become the culture for the human species. Good vision. <laughs> Good vision. So, so we need to find our communities. We need to, to find which communities we fit in to do this to do the things that we feel called to do, right? I mean, there's some people yeah. who, who want to uh, there's some people who really feel called to the permaculture. I've met some amazing permaculturists. I, I met this one guy who uh, is a French and I said, well, what's your, what's your just encapsulate your philosophy of, of this permaculture. And he said, well, there are two things. First of all, my garden should be like the jungle. I shouldn't have to be there. It should just work. And, and then the other one was that I want to be able to come out here when I'm 85 and and have and not have to do uh, anything that's beyond my capability. I want to just be able to putter around in my garden and harvest from it, even when I'm so old and decrepit that I can't, I couldn't build it anymore. And I thought that's a pretty good statement of what you're looking for, right? So permaculture. And we're moving forward on all levels, uh, Will. Uh, the awareness, as you observe, is gaining on our planet. Uh, uh, you yes. Know, you look at, at some of the, uh, the Eco Village uh, websites, and, and they have Eco Villages in Africa, really thriving things. Really? They're moving to restore the forest. Uh, there's a lot of really good things happening on, around the planet. And, and, you know, it's not all bad. But oh, no, of course not. Bad ahead of the good at this point and, and uh, it looks like it's all going to go down uh, it, uh, uh, except those who are living in ecological stability in their own self-sustaining community but uh, you know as I say the, this whole notion of infinite growth can be uh, 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 calmed down we can deal uh, on all levels with the situation.
situation that we are involved in that you know if we can't if we can't get to a self-sustaining community right away we can still make efforts toward the restoration of the earth yes uh, 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 the, the, uh, if you go to the friends of the tree website you find the uh, ecological Rege regenerative society information oh. friends of the trees okay friends of the trees and so this is there 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 are various movements that are very valuable in this regard okay there, there, uh, you know, not uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the old hippies in the 60s uh, you know probably during the summer of love in 1966 took a lot of mushrooms and realized that we're, we we need a new way of being and so uh, we we developed uh, alternative sheltered cob houses straw bale etc we have whole teams of people around the earth that are are, are uh, skilled in this we 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 developed an encounter group in terms of, of mental health for example mm -hmm. we developed uh, uh, the co-op food store system when 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 we developed the first co-op food stores there were no packaging everything was in bin right we said the problem of packaging stop it at the source and and bring your own containers and fill out of the, out of the bin and then the the rich people the corporate structure said oh shit look at that and so they started the whole recycling nonsense yeah said, oh it's okay if we have packaging uh, you know that we're recycling but which what, doesn't what happen what we hippies did every time we went to the store we got our items and right there on the cashier's <laughs> counter we took everything out of the packaging and put in our bag and left the packaging on the counter <laughs> 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 but, uh, so but the the uh, we had uh communes we had uh, uh it, it, Things were real experimental social, and uh, we had, for example, the Sexual Freedom League in Berkeley. I was living in the Bay Area at the time, and uh, it uh, the Sexual Freedom League became so uh, ho hum, so <laughs> people became so bored with it. They had to have speeches and movies before the orgies in order to attract people. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But this, so, this is what we we have to look at is the recreation of human culture. And so, it, it, we can't we can't take our existing culture into a self-sustaining community right now. <laughs> right. That's that's exactly what I'm seeing is we have to recognize that that's uh, that's not what's going on. We're not just all going to change out our gasoline vehicles for electric cars and everything's hunky dunky. We're we're beyond that point, and the whole the whole way of of life just can't exist. It's going to change a lot. So so the the uh, we, question we, we have an opportunity. Will uh, the the uh, MK Ultra. Uh, uh, Trauma-based mind control. Yeah. The way they do that, they produce a trauma through electric shock, LSD, or some sort of horrific experience. And right after the shock, then they introduce the suggestion that you are a different personality or whatever. But this is a key element. That you, you remember when 911 happened? Oh, yeah. They, had on the TV those planes flying into the building. Over, over. Oh. This is reinforcing the suggestion 
students yeah. at Sutton College. Now, uh, uh, what we're enduring right now, we're looking at a, at a, at a really severe depression, a social change, a global uh, a social change. Now, you're banging your mic. You're banging your mic a little. Careful. And so when 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 the uh, uh, as as you know two three four months from now when this gets to the bottom of the depression, this is the point that we need to spread our our answer because people then will be the most suggestible. This happened in the 1930s. When we got to the bottom of the depression, 1932, 33, people woke up and said, shoo, look at what's going on. And they began to organize unions. The CIO uh, uh, was created and millions of Americans joined unions and in solidarity together. This is what can happen when a severe impact hits society. And this is what we're looking at in the okay. very, near future, very near future. Now, how does I how do things look uh, for you down where you're you're near uh, Ashland, right, Oregon? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So how does it how does it look in? You know, I mean, like around here, the uh, the reaction to the COVID crisis, at least you know the people that I'm around. Uh, it's been a really wonderful reaction. Everybody's buying seeds and making more gardens, and the musical instruments at the musical instrument store are all gone. People said, well, if I'm going to stay inside, I'm going to be a better musician. And so, you know, to me, that's, that's the best. And I know in the States, in some parts of the United States, the reaction has been to buy more guns. And, you know, I mean, that's just not a good reaction as far as I'm concerned. So I'm just wondering how you would uh, rate the area where you live. Is this a conscious area? Well, I think, I think uh, everybody's got plenty of guns already around here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there is, so far, I've seen no social movement that seems uh, uh, beneficial because oh. I don't think have really realized the severity of the situation. Mm. There are uh, in in the in the uh, small community. I live eight miles from the small community of Wolf Creek. Uh, and there's one country store and two gas stations and uh, and nothing else. Uh, well, uh, some houses and whatever, but. Uh, a flea market has started up hmm. on, a, on a big uh, open piece of land right by the highway. And so what, what is beginning to develop is the underground economy, which is, is going to be one of the only things that we're going to have in the future is, yeah. is a black market economy. Do you have any trick? Do you have any alternative? Uh, Sorry. Do you have any alternative currencies? Do you have any alternative currencies that you know of set up in your area? No. We have two. We have really. Yeah, there's a the yeah on Salt Spring Island. There's a bank that uh, issues Salt Spring dollars, and they oh. so so they're yeah. the same denomination as the Canadian dollar, and it's all legal and copacetic. So that's kind of cool because you don't see them circulating here in Victoria, but Salt Spring isn't that far away. And then the other one is a First Nations group has made a currency called the Tetla. And it's a, it's a let's, you know, a, 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 what is that? It's an electronic trading system. And so it's, and some restaurants will accept them. Some, some people, typically people who provide services accept them. So cool. yeah, it really is a good thing to at least that that people are thinking along these lines and say, hey, what do we do when all the money goes away? Now, when I lived in Panama City, down in Panama, they don't have a central bank. They use the, elect the uh, US dollar for their currency. And the US dollar went into, 
I mean, the U.S. government wanted to uh, starve out Noriega, you know, really, and, and they didn't care who they hurt to get him. So one of the things they did was they shut off the tap for dollars. And the way Panama handled that was they issued checks, they issued paychecks to people in multiple denominations. So they'd issue, um, I, I'm not sure about the exact, you know, the numbers, but my friend down there told me that they'd have like if you got if you had a two hundred dollar paycheck, then you'd get ten checks for twenty dollars, and there would be no your name would not be on the check. You'd just get ten checks for twenty dollars issued by the government, and so people were circulating those checks for uh, months just to get through, and so that was really a creative solution where people people the the, the government in the United States they didn't care about all the people that were going to be affected by this decision to cut off the money supply so they could just get this one dude, which they had in fact hired originally, I think, isn't that true? The CIA and Noriega, he was like an asset and then he just kind of went rogue. So, I mean, so these are the kind of things that we have to think of as individuals because they're not thinking about us. We, they're not thinking about, we have to eat. So, growing your vegetables. And, and so maybe talking about these alternative currency systems is a good idea too. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, deep, this society, uh, forager hunters, you know, they gather around the campfire and have discussion and make uh, uh, political decisions. Right. But in this society, it, it's shaped like a pyramid with the emperor at the top. And and so uh, the emperor is surrounded by a small group of people called the elite or the ruling class or, or whatever. And this is the configuration of all civilized society. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the people at the top, the ruling elite, their interest is to maintain themselves. And so uh, uh, for 8,000 years, the, that group of people, the elite at the top of these pyramidal societies have been fighting the peasants on the bottom. <laughs> right. The peasants become discontent and, <laughs> and they have to be uh, controlled by the military force of the empire. Now that's what we have right now on a worldwide scale. We, uh, uh, when when uh, uh, the U.S. government goes down to Nicaragua to shoot peasants and kill peasants, they do it in behalf of the ruling elite, the small clique that, yes. that's owning and controlling Nicaragua. And this is a worldwide phenomenon where the ruling class, the corporate, transnational corporate structure, and the structure of central banks all over the world are fighting with the U.S. military against any peasant group anywhere in the world that rises up and challenges their buddies on the local third world ruling elite. Right. This is called a war against humanity. This is what's going on. These people are will kill whole societies in order to maintain their power. Yes. We've seen it over and over. Yeah. yeah I've, I've, uh, I've felt it, man. I've felt it. So <laughs> I don't know. The thing, the thing is here I am at, at, uh, at 65 and just not, uh, I, you know, there's some days when I can hardly walk. And so it's a little bit frustrating because, of course, I want to be a, a young guy out there running around in the forest and doing this stuff. But I have to content myself yeah. with with just um, I guess so. Th this conversation has been really good because I see that I'm on the right track doing what I do. And just I mean, just trying to talk to people and show people on Facebook, hey, wait a minute, guys, uh, this we're, we need to have a different discussion. All of the. All of the politicians, they may sound like they're different, but they're all doing the same things, and we're all, all of them are headed off the same cliff <laughs> if we follow them. So let's 
look over here at what we really have to do healing the earth. And the other thing that the Tamara literature pointed out that I'd like to say is that you, you're, you're tuning in, if you're doing it right, you're tuning into something that the earth wants. The, if, you, if you can wrap your head around Gaia being a living organism, you're, you're now tuning in to something really good. And so you need to start looking for little, uh, I don't know, my, my music teacher says, they're little fruits that appear along, like on a video game, uh, along your way. And you see, oh, I'm on the right track because I'm getting encouraged. I'm finding people who are on this track or a situation opens up in front of me, right? I mean, that's kind of how it is. It's, it's a good feeling once you tune into it. Uh -huh. You're healing yeah. the earth. <laughs> It's the process of realization. You realize it, you know, it's like geometry. You realize, oh, God, these things fit together. But that process of realization, when, when, it, when it comes down to realizing that we are alive and we are part of a living system, yes. that realization is a fundamental to our new culture, I believe. Yes, absolutely. Um, the one other thing I want to mention, I, I uh, am friends on Facebook with a, I think it's a, it's, well, I'm in a group called uh, the Holobionts. So it's H-O-L-O-B-I-O-N-T-S. And it's the idea is that we're all Holobionts. And the thing I like about the word is it's not, it's a gender, gender nonspecific, completely, there's no gender load at all. And then the other thing is it's not even, species specific or kingdom specific holobiont can just refer to living entities which somehow help each other which somehow are connected and and who are uh helping each other so i'm using i'm using that word instead of i'm a human or i'm a this or that I, and i really like it it's even using that one word sort of changes things for me <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't have much more to say. No, this has been great. Are, are you, uh, uh, do you have any other points to me? Um, well, the only other, the only other point I, I want to talk about going back to, I think we have to be easy on ourselves. I think that we have to get to the point where we can see that we have been unwitting participants in this in, in a lot of ways. I mean, maybe some people feel more guilty than I do, but I don't feel terribly guilty about the way I live my life. I, I mean, I, I admit to making mistakes, but I tried very hard to be a contributor to the system and to be nice to people. And then I see that despite those efforts, I mean, I, for example, I didn't stay in the debt market uh, working in that, which is where I started working originally in my career as a financial, in the financial uh, industry, because I didn't like the idea of making people borrow more money, even if the project seemed like it was a good idea. I didn't, I didn't feel right about uh, doing that, you know, in public finance. And so I went into automation, which I thought was, how can anybody criticize this? I'm helping people, uh, I'm helping feed the planet. I'm helping people, you know, get nicer things and yada, 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 all this story that I had bought. So when I, when I'm looking at that now, I, I'm, I have a tendency to beat myself up a little bit, which is not a healthy thing. I, I have to, you know, re reframe and change my consciousness so that I say, well, that got me to where I am now. And now I can see how I, how I was and the and the lies that I bought and it's important to to get over those lies that you tell yourself because you you take it out you beat yourself up over it even if you don't know that you're doing it so so one of the things that I think we all have to sort of uh, get the idea and I'm, I'm still this is a, a nascent thought rather than anything that's really well worked out but as there's a thing in uh, Prospero in one of Shakespeare's plays says, you know, the play's over now and it's time for us to all just go back to where we came from. And I think that to some extent, we all have to recognize that. Look, I was an asshole in this life. I was mean to you. I'm sorry about it, but let's move on. That was my role. I was a, I was a, a company president or I was a this or that. 
let's move on, let's make a new world. And, and that's what I think we really have to do is not, is, is and be forgiving of each other. Yes, you were an asshole, but that was your role. I understand, I was an asshole too. <laughs> and there's something about that that I think is really important. And it, and it also ties in to being able to grieve, to get out of the denial that our that our, our, our civilization is over with. We gotta get out of that and say, look, that was then, this is now, let's let's go. <laughs> so that's a, that's something that I, I want to cover in, in the future. All the all the living things have a, an energy system they live on. When yeah. we were forage hunters, we went out and gathered the fruits of the earth. But then when agriculture started, we became dependent upon sucking the fertility of the earth. Right. Now, when it began, there was no going back to forage or hunter because all the game had been eaten up and, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, there is no way, you know, we hippies in the 60s found out, you can't return to the natural world and live there because it's all gone. So we are stuck with living off the exploited system and, and unknowingly most of us for most of our lives. Uh, but uh, the kind of system we live in is unfortunate, but it's not our fault. We were born into this whole thing. And, but we are emerging and the consciousness that we're promoting is, is looking for a solution. And, and out, of, uh, out, of, out of the 60s came shelter, human relations, uh, uh, gardening, permaculture, yeah. all of those social answers. So what I'm suggesting is that we built part of a human culture in those times that we're now receiving. We have yoga, we have uh, uh, therapeutic communities, we have straw bale houses, uh, we have yeah. permaculture. We have all of these these resources pointed toward creating a new culture. And so that is our focus in, in terms of how, what direction we're going. And, and by the way, we'll uh, order your seed this fall because the, the masses of population that recognize that they're going to have to grow a garden are huge compared to the small seed company. Yes. There's going to be a massive bottleneck. So get your seeds early. Thank you for mentioning that. I think it's in, important. To, uh, and, you know, it's important to to start propagating these seeds, too. And, you know, it's like uh, we were just uh, – watching that fellow uh, Ron Finlay, who's a urban gardener. He calls himself a gangsta gardener down in LA. He's rewilding LA. <laughs> and he shows you how to, you know, he says, if you see a plant, you can just take off a little bit and he shows you how to clone it and everything. So we need to start learning how to do that instead of just depending on seeds. There's, there's, and Carolyn, my, my partner goes out and collects seeds everywhere. Because you could, they're free. I mean, they're sitting there. There are these flowers, and you just dump, you can dump out the poppy seeds. You don't even have to pick the flower. You just dump them out, and there are other seeds all around. We've gotten all these clary sage seeds. That was another thing that we just learned this year that Ron Finley uh, talked about. He says if you're having some problems with your uh, with your garden, how how many bees are actually coming to your garden? You need to put some nice flowers around for because the bees will come. There'll be more bees if you put some flowers in it. You know, I didn't think of that, I, but obviously we have the flowers over in another section. They need to be here. And then as soon as we do that, there are bees everywhere. And maybe that's a, something to worry about because the bees, you know, there are some problems with bees getting killed. So now we have to think about, you know, let's make this place a welcoming uh, garden for bees. <laughs> I don't know. It's really cool to, to change that consciousness like that. I have a beehive right outside my window here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have a worm farm. I have a, oh, yeah. a, a tub, and, and I've got them filled, got a worm farm going. 
so the, all, all of my kitchen debris goes into the worm farm. Sure. It ends up garden as worm casting. That's great. Uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, recover all all the organic material that I can, and and any any uh, plant in the garden that is past its usefulness, I chop it up and throw it on the soil so that there's a a, a big mulch that goes right. on the soil. Ultimately, nice. uh, being eaten up by the soil community and, and creating topsoil. And, Great. And, uh, but I'm making it uh, such efforts as I can. Uh, you know, if I were a millionaire, it would be different, but I'm living on so pure uh, uh, as a retiree. You know, yeah, me too. And, uh, so, but I'm but I'm still existing. <laughs> right. And you got your garden, so it's great. Well, I think we covered it all, and let's uh, let's just uh, let's have another conversation soon, and I'll I'll edit this and, and see what how it looks. We can, we can uh, look look toward the uh, future progress of our species. Yes. Toward, uh, ecological sustainability. Yes. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I'll just okay, I'll stop well. I'll stop the recording now.